Information is power. coming in. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Okay, everybody, welcome to the Information Man show. It's been a while since I've been on live on this particular channel. I've been doing a lot of work on my second channel. That's the second channel, which goes by the name of Information Man Speaks Podcast. Uh, you should check it out sometimes. I normally go late night when I do streams over there, but if you can't catch the late night streams that I'm doing because I'm in the West Coast, you can always catch uh, the replay. I'm having a lot of fun over there with the program over there. Last night, uh, I got into the whole issue around the NFAC, the black militia that went up to Stone Mountain, Georgia yesterday. They went up there exactly on 4th of July, to be quite correct here. And they put it down, ladies and gentlemen. They put it right in the area where the Ku Klux Klan was founded. So I got I put my foot into that particular podcast, breaking some things down. Uh, Grand Master J, as he calls himself, was the brother that created that black all black militia outfit. See, for those of you out there who criticize the pro black, it's the pro black that get out there and put feet to ground and stick it where it needs to be sticked and stood up. So we can get into all type of philosophical differences about pro black, pro this and that. But a lot of times when something goes down, a lot of y'all call on a lot of y'all are not going to go out there and do what those brothers and sisters did yesterday. Given the fact that you had these racial uh, white supremacist groups uh, threatening that they were going to do harm to black people. So what they did is they made a statement to go to 
Stone Mountain, Georgia, exactly where the Ku Klux Klan was founded, where they got their birth and where they also died. Because remember, they lost the Civil War, but they're still fighting the Civil War. Ladies and gentlemen, before I begin my presentation, I'm not going to be on here for a super long time. I'm going to get right into it, to the facts. The thumbnail speaks for itself. Let me at least give some peace and love to folks that are in the chat room. We've got O Eliable here. We got 3D Burns in the house. We got Studio in the house. We got Underrated Darkness in the house. We got uh, Michael Action in the house. But Beverly's in the house. We've got uh, Jay Blackman from uh, over in the Periscope area. Oh, I know that. That's JT, Underrated Darkness. He in the Periscope as well as in here. He came in through Periscope probably first. And we got uh, Brittany Dunn, who's in the house. Thank you for being here. We've got Young, Young Peasy in the house. And we got my main man, Mr. Mel of Vice. Let me give him a handshake there. And then we got Sister G coming in. So we got Sister G in the house. And then we've got uh, Monstar Sports and Entertainment. Welcome here. So let me get into the presentation. Um, this is about my main man, Frederick Douglass. And I want to go over a few things because recently in New York, his statue was taken down. It was snatched down completely from its base. I mean, completely from its base. And... We know why this is happening, ladies and gentlemen, because this is a, a, a term that we all know very well, which is for every action, there will be a reaction. So right now, uh, a lot of the um, white supremacists and those who believe in these Confederate flags and these Confederate statues, they're taking a heavy hit. They've been taking a hit for quite a bit. They're seeing statues like Christopher Columbus being taken down just recently. Um, Christopher Columbus uh, statue was thrown into the harbor of New York, taken down. And that's why I think this is the reaction to that situation happening. And this is the funny thing about it. You know, Christopher Columbus wasn't even really Italian. He was just a mercenary. Matter of fact, there's if you go deeper into the history, he actually was Jewish. And during that time, they were persecuting Jews and he took advantage of this opportunity to be an explorer to get away from his persecution. He was not a, he was not Italian. So it makes no sense for those in New York or those people that are Italian to hold on uh, in America. That is to hold on to Christopher Columbus, who, by the way, he was killed by Spain. When he came back, they ended up executing him. And you know, the things that Christopher Columbus used to do, he tortured people, cut people's hands off when he came over here to the quote unquote, new world which he did not discover how can you discover something that when there's already people here that's like me finding your car and saying hey i discovered your car with you in it it's it's, it's ridiculous it's laughable at very best <laughs> so they're hanging on to these monuments then you've got the confederate monuments now how many of you out there know that the great great grandson who is a priest um, said that he is a grand, he's a great grandson of General Lee. He said, hey, take these goddamn Confederate flags down. I don't agree with it. He's my great, great grandfather and I don't even agree with it. And even General Lee himself, before he died, he told them he did not want to be buried in a Confederate flag or did he want them to maintain this Confederate, these Confederate uh, 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 history because Tell me a country in the world on this planet that celebrates and erects monuments to those that lost the war because they were traitors. No country's done. No one's doing that except for the United States that for a long time, they've been erecting statues throughout the South for a lost cause, for a fallen military, for a traitorous military in the confederate army and the union army ain't no damn better either so just keep that in mind these monuments have a symbolic 
uh, symbolism to them. What is that? It is to continue reinforcing white supremacy, continue reinforcing that we are in control. So when you see statues, they resonate to people who believe in what they represent, meaning it resonates to them that it, it represents that we are in power. When you went to Charlottesville and you had those cowards out there with the tiki torches saying you will not replace us they're trying to maintain their culture which is steeped in white supremacy racism and oppression that's how american society was built so i must i must emphasize that so when we look at confederate monuments why were they placed there most of these confederate monuments were placed in the united states between the years of the 1920s into the 1940s and then during the uh the 50s into the 60s you start having what we call the daughters of the confederate confederacy daughters of the confederacy which were women white women who erected these statues as a way to pay homage to the confederate army but as a way to reinforce their white supremacy, their control and power. That's what the hangman noose represents when they hung black people. That's what these statues represent. Now, when you look at the statue of our beloved Frederick Douglass, That's the statue right there that they ended up tearing down right off its base. Look at this picture. I'm going to show you a series of pictures today. It got torn off complete base. Now, when you look at Frederick Douglass, what did he stand for? He stood for freedom, justice, and equality. He does not have a history of owning slaves. He does not have a history of oppressing people. Look at this, folks. Look how they took it right off the damn base. He does not have a history of oppressing people, enslaving people, and putting out hatred. When you look at Confederate monuments, look at that brother with that beautiful afro and goatee. When you look at Confederate statues in this country, most of the individuals that are being erected are individuals who were slave owners. They were they were treasonous to the union of this country. They were, uh, 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 some of them were rapists. They raped, raped black women in the slave quarters. Uh, these people have horrible pasts. Now people say, well, wait a minute. It's a part of our history, our heritage. Okay, put it in a goddamn museum and let people who want to see that shit pay a fee for it. But when it comes to a statue of one Frederick Douglass, this is a statue that you can be proud of because it's steeped in what American society is supposed to be about. What's up, uh, Brother Raymond? Uh, forever. Thank you for being here, brother. And Sister B is coming in the house. Thank you for being here, too. And then we've got V. Carter in the house. I can't believe someone tore it down. Yes, they did, sister. They did. Uh, then we got Mr. Miles who's coming in the house. And we got 3D Burns. Yes, they tore it down. I'm going to get into the article here for you and, and talk to you about it. But I just want to let I just want to set the, the framework here. So there's this there's this that's beautiful Frederick Douglass. The statue was completely ripped. This is in New York. Okay. And he stood for something. But the other statues that are being taken down, and I know people are taking them down. And there's people out there to say that's not the right way to do it. You go through legal means. But the statues that they're taking down that are not a statue like Frederick Douglass are people who were killers, rapists, slave owners, people who oppressed native people when they came to the land. Why are we celebrating that? Why are we celebrating uh, a confederacy that was a traitorous to this country? Why? So let me get into this. Uh, this right here. Let me explain something to everybody out there okay so the statue of frederick douglas a former enslaved black abolitionist in the in the mid 1800s who helped to transport other enslaved people see this is a man that did things this is a man of high spiritual character okay he helped to seek 
seek freedom on the Underground Railroad. Now, the area that he's been, that, that that he was uh, his statue was erected. Let me tell you right here. This was in Rochester, New York. Enslaved people seeking freedom on the Underground Railroad was removed from its pedestal in a park in Rochester, New York by vandals over the weekend of 4th of July during the same weekend that he gave the speech as it relates to 4th of July and how 4th of July, it never spoke to the enslaved black man and woman. So when you look at this, let me put this back up here real quick. So you see right here was broken off of its pedestal. There's a picture of it erected right there. And then when they took it off, they broke the hand on it. You can see a picture right there, right? And then the police or whoever had to take it from behind the fence that it was in. What's going on, Brother Kenny? So it's behind the fence like that. It got, it got thrown over there. And what's unique about the park that the statue is placed in, and you really need to understand this history, is that this is exactly where the Underground Railroad was at in the New York, coming into the New York area. So it's a very sacred area. It has very sacred uh, symbolism to it because this is the area where black people escaping from the South coming into the New York area was in this park. So to me, it's holy ground for American descendants of slavery. ADOS, black people born here, lineage to this land. They took it down and okay, one can say, oh, it's an eye for an eye because you know, people in the protest are taking things down. So you can't complain info. What you complaining about? What are you whining about? Are you blaming it on Donald Trump? That's too simple, money, because we already know that Donald Trump caters to the white supremacist. We know that the people that put him in office, the same mega hat wearing individuals are the same people who holler out, make America great again. You know that symbolism. Let's hear it again. We will make America great again. In the White House, I'm not going to say his name. We will make America great again. So when he says make America great again, that's a dog whistle for make America white again. And you got to ask yourself, when was America great? Tell us what year it was. Uh, can somebody tell us? Because last time I checked, America for black people, given the lineage through slavery and even black people that were native to this land, it was never good for us once we encountered the Europeans trying to oppress us. So when you say make America great again, that's a dog whistle to make America great again because we want to bring America back to the 40s, the 30s, the 20s, during the time in which we can oppress black people. And when you look at your Karens out there, and thank you, Sister B, for the super chat. I appreciate that. Thank you for the super chat. When you think of the Karens out there, you got to remember that older white women come from a time where they had the protection of the system. So you had white women that would accuse black men of raping them and those black men would be hung, killed, brutalized like Emmett Till. Rosewood was a, was a, was a, a thriving community in Florida that was burned down by white supremacists. We got Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, white woman again lied on a young black man, young black male, saying he did something to her, and they burned the whole guy. Not only burned it, but they bombed the goddamn town. It was a massacre. And so, what you see when you see the Karens of the world going out there telling black people what to do is that they have always been used to being able to accuse us of things, and then they have the protection of white men that would come around and do what? Snatch us up and hang us by nooses so now they don't have that protection now we're not taking it anymore now we don't have to take it anymore and when they get up in our face talking a lot of crap they get smacked down so i'm saying this to say that what happened to the statue of frederick douglas is a manifestation of the fact that you have groups of people in this country who are racist 
who don't like what's happening. They don't like the change that's happening or appears to be happening. Because remember, there are illusions, folks, that appears to be happening. They're taking losses. And so they say, well, let's go grab up the Frederick Douglass statue because we're taking losses. So let's take their monuments. And guess what? Black folks don't really have many monuments in this country. I can tell you for a fact, because I have inside information on this, it to, it went it was through hell and thunder just to get the Dr. Martin Luther King um, memorial done in Washington, D.C. And the government of this country who claims every time Dr. King's birthday comes around, how much they love Dr. Martin Luther King. Guess what? The federal government didn't even kick in the money. All that money had to be put out there and donated my fraternity was the first organization that backed this move and we had to go out and get other people to donate for the cause because the federal government although they gave land and it was a struggle just to get the goddamn land they didn't kick in any extra money and every other monument that is on the mall in washington dc besides the dr king monument guess what ladies and gentlemen they all were paid for by the federal government pro bono the dr king monument they didn't give it that so that shows you a lot you put your money where your mouth is so when you hear these politicians talking about how much they love dr king tell them they're a goddamn lie because they didn't do it they didn't even they didn't pass any measures to pay federal money to pay it all off we should have never had to raise money to put that since they claim that they love dr king which is i believe a lie so i just want to i just wanted to put that down there so black people in america we only have so many statues around this country and to be honest with you when i made the statement about well the confederate statues and all that put it in a goddamn museum a lot of our history is in museums there's a lot of the history of black people in America that you don't even see out and about. Some of a lot of it is hidden behind, you know, glass in museums. And then there's some, you know, landmarks like the landmark where Frederick Douglass statue was at. This is his burial, Frederick Douglass, 1818 to 1895. Let me get back to this article here. So the statue was vandalized on July 4th weekend, which in addition to being a national holiday is also the anniversary of a famous speech delivered by Douglas entitled what to the slave is the 4th of July. The speech given in 1852, all right, disparages the celebration of freedom and liberty at a time when the country still was practicing slavery because america was built on slavery folks it's often reread on july 4th weekend to remind others and continue struggle the continue struggle against racial violence that exists for black americans in today's society ladies and gentlemen the erection this this statue was erected in 2018 in maplewood park which is run uh, which runs along part of the path of the underground railroad as i mentioned before the statue was found was founded around 50 it was found around about 50 feet away from its base near the grassy river area of the park there was a there was damage to the statue at the base as well as to one of the fingers and i did show you that right here here it is right there and then you have right there the base completely ripped off and and, and and don't get me wrong i understand what's going on folks it's an it's an eye for an eye and a two for a tooth you take down our racist confederal confederate monuments and we'll take down your beloved frederick douglas i get it but that ain't that don't mean we're not gonna do what we have to do either because um, this is a battle between evil and good, ladies and gentlemen. 
So they tore off the finger. One of the organizers of the project that brought the statue to the park said it is possible that the statue was damaged in response to other uprising happening across the country where monuments to leaders of the Confederate Confederacy have been forcibly removed by demonstrators. I get it. I get that. In support of the ratio inequality. Okay. It now is this some type of retribution because of the national fl- uh, fever over Confederate monuments right now? Very disappointing. It's beyond disappointing. And this is what uh one of the reporters was reporting. So that's basically I'm not going to go completely over this whole thing, but that's basically what's going on. So most of you, if you check the news, you're going to, this is what happened today. Okay. This is, uh, this is the reality. This is the reality of what has taken place. So, so Frederick Douglass's statue has been ripped off from the base. It's been damaged, uh, vandalism. I suspect that more of this is going to happen simply because of the atmosphere that we're living in right now. It's racially charged. People are upset about their uh, Confederate statues being taken down. And so as a result, they're taking down the things that we hold uh, dear to our hearts. But I'm going to say this again. The difference between their statues being taken down is that these are people that were truly evil individuals. Evil. Let me tell you something. Uh, George Washington, I said this last night. Remember the little fairy tale that they told you in school, ladies and gentlemen, that he had wooden teeth? The reason why he had jacked up dinnerware was because uh, George Washington uh, was a slave owner. He had slaves. Matter of fact, he fathered a black child. They don't tell you about that. I'll be bringing that to the forefront soon. But what he would do when he was having issues with his teeth is that he would have them pull the teeth without anesthetic, ladies and gentlemen, without any anesthetic. He would have them pull the teeth of some of his slaves, pull their teeth out of their mouth, and then they would try to fit the teeth into his mouth. That's why George Washington had jacked up teeth, because he took teeth from some other people and then it got jaggedly put in his mouth, meaning those teeth never belonged in his mouth. Now, now with me saying that, now you see why some of these damn monuments need to come down. You got you don't you uh, when you erect a monument, you erect monuments to people that were great, people who were transformable, transformable, people who lived appropriate lives. You don't erect statues to people who are killers, rapists, slave owners, liars, and disaster like that. You don't do that. If you go to Germany right now, do you know that the the uh, swastika flag? The Nazi flags, if you get caught flying it, you get big heavy fines, you go to jail. You can't put it into public square. You can't do anything with it. They'll kick your ass over there. Another thing, too, that people don't realize, in Germany, do you see any statues of uh, 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 Adolf Hitler? Huh? In Germany, there's no statues of Adolf Hitler. If, if they find the statue, it's coming down. Nobody is erecting statues. So you can make the same argument that these Confederate statues are the same as that because many of these Confederate soldiers and military generals, they killed a lot of black people. And let me also say this too. You had, uh, when black people were quote unquote free in emancipation of proclamation, which is not freedom. It just meant that they were, um, the property of the North. Really? You're not free. Just break down what the word means. But many people don't realize that you had union soldiers who were supposed to, uh, be working on black people's side, right? Um, who actually went into the South and killed thousands of black people. The union army did that. So, so next time someone tells you, well, you know, the, 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 the white folks uh, shed blood for your people, man, because the union, ar- no, some of the union army members killed black people too. Okay. Now, I'm going to say this too. America would not be America and would have never won that war. Every war that America has been in, they would have never been able to win that war if it had not been for black soldiers. Let's see. You had the, you had the, uh, 
Tuskegee Airmen. You had the triple nickel paratrooper outfit. You had black women in the, in the military that did things. Oh, Native Americans were uh, code talkers. So you had Native people that broke down the code. So without certain folks, you would have never won the goddamn war. Without black folks, you would, the Union Army would have never won the Civil War against the South. It wasn't until they put black men into that war that the, that that war came to an end. Nobody wants to talk about that history. So that's why we can afford to have the attitude that we have because our ancestors paid a heavy price. So I suspect that there will be more monuments that are monuments that have to do with black heroes and sheroes. I suspect more of them will be taken down. So it was erected, it's been taken down. And that's the breaking news, folks. That's the breaking news. And then here's another picture. They completely pulled it from its base. And, and don't get me wrong, I get what's going on. You hit us, we'll hit you, we'll hit you, you hit us. It's a battle right now going on. Let me get some of the folks' uh, opinions in the chat room, uh, what their opinions are, real quick before I play an audio, um, which is basically celebrating what the brother was saying about 4th of July. I'm going to play a little bit of an audio. I won't play the whole audio, but I'm going to play some of it today. So let's see what folks are saying in the chat room. They hung black men in their military uniforms when they got back. Exactly. Exactly, uh, Zone, you're absolutely right nobody can argue with that is a fact make sure you share this video everybody i really appreciate that if you could we've got 3d burn says factual let's see we got jeffries brother jeffries Lashawn jeffries comes in the house he say was crawling able the teeth sorry even in 8 1980 tech was top notch dental to george washington mm, interesting Let's see, uh, we got 12 in the house. She says, I don't go to Rochester or Rhode Island. Racism means what at what as black boys gangster rap. Okay. Let's see who else is in here that I can read what they're saying. Okay, we've got uh, Sister V Carter. Wonder what uh, Candace Owens got to say about this. Well, you know, She's going to make some excuse for it. You know what she's going to say? She's going to say, well, you guys are tearing down the Confederate monuments. And so it's only fair. You know, Candace is going to lay on the side of where her butter is, is buttered the most because she's making money. You know, a lot of these black folks that you see uh, on Fox News and some of these um, conservative talking blacks, a lot of these folks, people are, to a lot of these folks are on a leash. They're being paid. They're getting paid very well to push that narrative. So they're doing they're going to go with what's buttering their buttering their bread. But I can tell you what what happens to most of these these type of black folks. Eventually, when they get sick of them, they're going to throw them off their lap like a lap dog. Sister V Carter, they're going to get rid of them after they use them up. It's get what they can out of them, use them up and then discard them and then they'll find them a new a uh, black mascot to go around and the reason why black conservatives in general are able to be as successful they are within that that within the republican party is because this is how it works you get a conservative black person who will talk nasty about black people if you notice when they're on television they spend all their time talking about what's wrong with the black community however how many of these black conservatives are in key power positions? Remember, uh, uh, um, what was the one brother that became the the leader of the Republican Party? They got rid of him. Uh, uh, Michael Steele, the, Michael Steele. They gave My Michael Steele had the keys and control of the Republican uh, Party in terms of their their the RMC. He wanted to be his own man and get his own people. And they said, uh-uh, 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 you ain't going to be able to do that. And he ended up eventually um, dropping down and eventually retiring from politics. 
because they only gonna they 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 they, they only gonna let you go so far, and they usually use black conservatives to talk about black people, so it does not come off like they're being racist. So they get them a talking dog to talk about us. Okay, let me go into the chat room and see what else people are saying here before I. Let's see. LaShawn took down Uncle Ben. Ain't you mama and missing Buckwheat Worth work something something caved on stone ease. Let me tell you something, folks. Get into what you said, Brother Jeffrey. I don't really care. Uh, even if they take down the Confederate flags in the South, and I think they should be coming down, they should be down. And even if they take Ain't, Ain't Your Mama off the pancake box and various other people, it doesn't, it, it, it's great. It's a great symbolic gesture, but it does not mean anything if you don't change policy. So even, so for example, if, if black people make up 40%, of the population of Mississippi, for example. Mississippi has the largest black population in the country. And even though they take down the Confederate flags, which they should, nothing will still change even if the Confederate flag is taken down, which it should be taken down, if there's not policy changes. So you can have Confederate flags no longer there, but if black people are still living in poverty, no job opportunity, no industry, and the policies are working against black people in Mississippi, it'll almost be the same as if the Confederate flag is still flying high. We gotta change these policies. I mean, you got 40% of black people in Mississippi, for example, but you only got one black elected official. Something does not make sense there. Check it out for yourself if you don't think I'm telling you the truth. Now, let me see uh, what my man, um, Peace, brother. Thank you for being over here. Exactly, Info. Thank you, brother, for coming over. from. You were over in my chat in my second channel last night. Okay, we got Topaz who's coming in the house, and we got brother Kenny that's in the house. We've got sister Tiffany Jackson. Info, man, your contact is, your your content is, thank, is hot. Thank you. Hey, thank you, sister. I'm doing the best I can. So as a reminder, uh, they took um, at the park, in, there's a park in um, Rochester, New York, which is a park that is known for the area in which you had the Underground Railroad for black people trying to escape from the South to the North. And they made a statue that they erected to one Frederick Douglass. Let me show it to you again. So this is the statue when it was actually hanging up, folks, to you, Sister, ja Sister Jackson. And then this is the statue hand that was ripped off of there. Let me take that off of there. I just want to remind people who are coming in a little bit late because I'm not going to be on here for a long time. And then they put the statue behind the fence where they're trying to get it out of there. It got completely torn off of its base. Completely. And uh, I'm not screaming and yelling. I'm not getting super upset because I know that this is an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. I know this is the their way of trying to, to say, okay, you're going to tear our stuff down. We're going to tear your stuff down. And I suspect that this is going to continue to happen, everybody. Uh, like I said before, black folks don't have that many monuments up in this country. So there's not very much for them to take down that belongs to us. But there's a hell of a lot of monuments to these damn uh, Stonewall, Jackson, and all these other buffoons of the Confederacy, which, by the way, they were the enemies of the state. I don't know why anybody can't figure that one out. You don't you don't memorialize people who were traitors to the state. I said this before, you can go to any country in this world. They do not erect statues. They do not er erect flags or any of these things to people who were a traitor to the state in the union. Let me go back in the chat room and see who else. I think Amy is in the house here. Let's see. Let me see. Amy, where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at, Amy? She does a great, she has a good channel. She does a lot of sports and things of that nature. If she's in the house, everybody check out Amy if you can. We got Eric Ford who's come in. Cut the check. Yeah, cut the goddamn check. I would agree with you. And uh, let me show you guys something for a reminder. Funny you said that, brother. Let me show you something for a reminder. Let me switch my, my envelopes here real quick. That's my uh, show from the last night, one of the, but I want to show y'all something. So you got Jason Black who put that up not too long ago in New York.
And I want to say, uh, so that's Jason Black who put that up in New York. And um, he put that sign up. You see it right there. Election. The issue is reparations. Cut the check for the descendants of American slaves paid for by Black Channel. He went to New York. He said he got a lot of pushback putting this up. He got a lot of pushback. Let me show you the other one he put. When you come into Manhattan, New York, he put that sign up. Welcome to Manhattan, where racial profiling is legal. Thank you, Governor Cuomo. Because you know these guys are going to try to run for president. So that was Jason Black who put that up. So let me pull out of that and get out of this, get out of my files from my podcast channel back into the Information Man files. There we go. Boom. Back where it should be. So I want everybody to, to really understand that. Let me show you these pictures again. I want you to really understand what they've done here. This is going to continue to go on. This is what I want to say to everybody. Let's not become emotional about it. Let's use strategy. They're doing this because they want us to become emotional. They want us to do something crazy. So they're going to attack our monuments. Once again, they're going to try to attack our children. They're going to try to attack our women. They're going to go and try to attack our young, young men. And they're going to attack us as men as well. So I would say to everybody, I've been saying this for a minute. Watch where you're going. Watch your back. Watch your goings and your comings. Don't be walking in the cuts by yourself as a black person. Get, don't do it. Don't do it. Be prepared always for anything to happen. Always be prepared. You plan, you hope for the best, but you damn well better plan for the worst. My dear brother, Frederick Douglass. Let me get people's thoughts in the chat room here. Peace info. What's up, Jasmine Virgo? It's good to see you here. Let me give some uh, some respect to folks coming in. We got Tyson. Get it. VO. What's going on? Whoa, that's true. Thank you, brother Tyson, for coming in. If you have not, let me do some. Let me do a quick advertisement here, too. If you have not, folks, if you have not checked out the Information Man Speaks podcast, you don't know what you're missing late night. You don't know what you are missing over there. If you had not checked out the podcast, I usually do the podcast uh saturday nights friday nights sometimes sunday nights sometimes maybe a wednesday or a thursday night occasionally and i go i'm in the west coast so i usually go on a little late here well it's late for people in the east coast and maybe people in the midwest and i get into the topics a little bit more raw more of a radio style program so i just wanted to remind everybody if you have not subscribed to the information man speaks podcast Go ahead and do that. You can also catch it on these platforms right here. Uh, let me let me put something right there. So I'm also on uh, traditional podcasting platform, platforms as well. And like uh, SoundCloud, Spotify, Spreaker, Anchor, CastBox, uh, in t- TuneIn Radio, Radio.com, uh, iHeartRadio um, Podcast, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. I'm on all those platforms. So and some of the podcast that i have on the traditional platforms uh some of that material is not what's on the youtube channel and then sometimes on my second youtube channel which is the podcast channel sometimes i will port some materials from the late night show over to the traditional podcasting platforms so subscribe to the youtube channel version and check me out on those other platforms there i got the ticker going down at the bottom you can see the different platforms that i'm on i really appreciate you all being here and supporting the Information Man uh, program. Another thing I've got coming to you folks is I got a lot of good interviews coming up. Let me say shout out to everybody. Shout out to everyone in the chat room, the moderators, those that are watching and listening and new guests to the channel. Thank you. That's on a tick or two as well, ladies and gentlemen. So I've got um, a lot of great interviews coming down the line i believe uh not believe but on uh july 11th which is basically next saturday i'll be interviewing the uh, uh, the brothers from um uh, off the record podcast so it's about 
it's about four of these brothers that I'll be bringing onto my platform, interviewing them about their podcast and, and talking to them about all of the day's issues that we are dealing with. So I just want to tell you, um, everybody, keep this in mind. We're going to hear more of this. We're going to see our monuments, our heroes and sheroes be disfaced. Um, we're talking about murals being disfaced as well. Um, there's murals in this country where we have people like Malcolm X on the mural. We have Dr. King on the mural. Someone's going to try to do vandal. I wouldn't be surprised if someone tries to vandalize the Dr. King monument in Washington, D.C. Something's going to give here. I think that we, I think COVID-19 and the death of George Floyd, unfortunately, it has to come at the price of a black man's life. And it really does bother me that it takes a black man dying before we wake up and do what we should have been doing before this man had to die as a symbolic symbol to a certain degree. But his death in the COVID-19, everything that's happened in the 20, 2020, and the fact that we've got this Ku Klux Klan member in the White House, you know his name. In the White House, I'm not gonna say his name. I think it's all divine prophecy because if this is something that's going to wake us up as a people to do for ourselves, now black lives matter. I, I agree with the concept that black people's lives do matter, but I don't agree with the organizational structure of black lives matter. Because when you go to their website, there is absolutely nothing about black men specifically or the black family. Everything is about all this um, sexual justice and intersectional and let's bring everybody into this rainbow. It's like black people can't have anything. Excuse me, let me have a little bit of water here. We can't have anything for ourselves. That speaks to our issues. We always, and once you start to bring other people in like that, you water it down and then other people will get what they want and they'll leave us holding a empty bag. So when you go to their website, this organization owes its existence to young black men who were killed. Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, Philando Castile, George Floyd, Eric Garner, all, all these different individuals, Breonna Taylor, all the black men and black women that have lost their life, but particularly black men, they've made their fame and their bones off the backs of dead black men. And then when you go to their website, everything is about the sexual stuff, the LBGQ and everything else. Very little is being said about the importance of the black family and the black man of that family. And even when you saw the Rolling Stones cover, you have the cover with the black woman, black child. But the only black man in the picture is a dead black man, and that's George Floyd, because he was a picture on the shirt of the black female illustration on the Rolling Stones cover. That is problematic on so many levels. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. So I'm going to get ready to get on out of here pretty uh, pretty much soon here. I think everybody gets the gist of what I'm saying. Frederick Douglass. Well, no, I'm not going to leave yet. Let me play something for you all. You've got to hear some of this just a little bit. I'm not going to play the whole thing. It's about 18 minutes. I'm only going to play just a little bit for everybody because I don't want to hold everybody here all, all, all day long. Here we go. July 4th for the Negro by Frederick Douglass. Fellow citizens, I am not wanting in respect for the fathers of this republic. The signers of the Declaration of Independence were brave men. They were great men, too, great enough to give frame to a great age. It does not often happen to a nation to raise at one time. Let me stop it right there. 
when I heard that part of it, because this is actually the words of Frederick Douglass, but I realized that it was the, he was speaking in the time that he was living in. So the part when he says that they were great men, we know that they were not great men because of what they were doing. What Frederick Douglass is talking about is that the ideals that they had were great, really, but their actions did not match up with the ideals of how they wanted to run this country as it relates to black people. So remember the time that he lived in, because I, lis I listened to that part of it and I thought, oh, Frederick Douglass, come on, man. But then as I listened to it, he sticks it to them real hard. Here we go. The number of truly great men. The point from which I am compelled to view them is not, certainly, the most favorable, and yet I cannot contemplate their great deeds with less than admiration. They were statesmen, patriots, and heroes, and for the good they did, and the principles they contended for, I will unite with you to honor their memory. Fellow citizens, pardon me, allow me to ask, why am I called upon to speak here today? What have I, or those I represent, to do with your national independence? Are the great principles of political freedom and of natural justice embodied in that Declaration of Independence extended to us? And am I, therefore, called upon to bring our humble offering to the national altar and to confess the benefits and express devout gratitude for the blessings resulting from your independence to us? Would to God, both for your sakes and ours, that an affirmative answer could be truthfully returned to those questions. Then would my task be light, and my burden easy and delightful. For who is there so cold, that a nation's sympathy could not warm him? Who so obdurate and dead to the claims of gratitude, that would not thankfully acknowledge such priceless benefits? Who so stolid and selfish, that would not give his voice to swell the hallelujahs of a nation's jubilee when the chains of servitude had been torn from his limbs. I am not that man. In a case like that, the dumb might eloquently speak and the lame man leap as an art. But such is not the state of the case. I say it with a sad sense of the disparity between us. I am not included within the pale of glorious anniversary. Your high independence only reveals the immeasurable distance between us. The blessings in which you this day rejoice are not enjoyed in common. The rich inheritance of justice, liberty, prosperity, and independence bequeathed by your fathers is shared by you, not by me. The sunlight that brought light and healing to you has brought stripes and death to me. This 4th July is yours, not mine. You may rejoice. I must mourn. To drag a man in fetters into the grand illuminated temple of liberty and call upon him to join you in joyous anthems or inhuman mockery and sacrilegious irony. Do you mean, citizens, to mock me by asking me to speak today? If so, there is a parallel to your conduct. And let me warn you that it is dangerous to copy the example of a nation whose crimes, towering up to heaven, were thrown down by the breath of the Almighty, burying that nation in irrevocable ruin. I can today take up the plaintive lament of a peeled and woe-smitten people. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there, they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they who wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Fellow citizens,
Above your national tumultuous joy, I hear the mournful wail of millions, whose chains, heavy and grievous yesterday, are today rendered more intolerable by the jubilee shouts that reach them. If I do forget, if I do not faithfully remember those bleeding children of sorrow this day, may my right hand forget her cunning, and may my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth to forget them, to pass lightly over their wrongs, and to chime in with the popular theme would be treason most scandalous and shocking, and would make me a reproach before God and the world. My subject, then, fellow citizens, is American slavery. I shall see this day and its popular characteristics from the slave's point of view. Standing there, identified with the American bondman, making his wrongs mine, I do not hesitate to declare with all my soul that the character and conduct of this nation never looked blacker to me than on this 4th of July. Whether we turn to the declarations of the past or to the professions of the present, the conduct of the nation seems equally hideous and revolting. America is false to the past, false to the present, and solemnly binds herself to be false to the future. Standing with God and the crushed and bleeding slave on this occasion, I will, in the name of humanity which is outraged, in the name of liberty which is fettered, in the name of the Constitution and the Bible which are disregarded and trampled upon, dare to call in question and to denounce with all the emphasis I can command, Everything that serves to perpetuate slavery, the great sin and shame of America, I will not equivocate, I will not excuse, I will use the severest language I can command, and yet not one word shall escape me that any man whose judgment is not blinded by prejudice, or who is not at heart a slaveholder, shall not confess to be right and just." But I fancy I hear someone of my audience say, It is just in this circumstance that you and your brother abolitionists fail to make a favorable impression on the public mind. Would you argue more and denounce less? Would you persuade more and rebuke less? Your cause would be much more likely to succeed. But I submit, where all is plain, there is nothing to be argued. What point in the anti-slavery creed would you have me argue? On what branch of the subject do the people of this country need light? Must I undertake to prove that the slave is a man? That point is conceded already. Nobody doubts it. The slaveholders themselves acknowledge it in the enactment of laws for their government. They acknowledge it when they punish disobedience on the part of the slave. There are 72 crimes in the state of Virginia which, if committed by a black man, no matter how ignorant he be, subject him to the punishment of death, while only two of the same crimes will subject a white man to the like punishment. What is this but the acknowledgment that the slave is a moral, intellectual, and responsible being? The manhood of the slave is conceded. It is admitted in the fact that southern statute books are covered with enactments forbidding, under severe fines and penalties, the teaching of the slave to read or to write. When you can point to any such laws in reference to the beasts of the field, then I may consent to argue the manhood of the slave. When the dogs in your streets, when the fowls of the air, when the cattle on your hills, when the fish of the sea and the reptiles that crawl shall be unable to distinguish the slave from a brute, then will I argue with you that the slave is a man. For the present, it is enough to affirm the equal manhood of the Negro race. Is it not astonishing that, while we are plowing, planting and reaping, using all kinds of mechanical tools, erecting houses, constructing bridges, building ships, working in metals of brass, iron, copper, silver, and gold, that, while we are reading, writing, and ciphering, acting as clerks, merchants, and secretaries, having among us lawyers, doctors, ministers, poets, authors, editors, orators, and teachers, that, while we are engaged in all manner of enterprises common to other men, 
digging gold in California, capturing the whale in the Pacific, feeding sheep and cattle on the hillside, living, moving, acting, thinking, planning, living in families as husbands, wives, and children, and above all, confessing and worshiping the Christian's God, and looking hopefully for life and immortality beyond the grave. We are called upon to prove that we are men. Would you have me argue that man is entitled to liberty, that he is the rightful owner of his own body? You have already declared it. Must I argue the wrongfulness of slavery? Is that a question for Republicans? Is it to be settled by the rules of logic and argumentation, as a matter beset with great difficulty, involving a doubtful application of the principle of justice, hard to be understood? How should I look today, in the presence of Americans, dividing and subdividing a discourse, to show that men have a natural right to freedom? Speaking of it relatively and positively, negatively and affirmatively, to do so would be to make myself ridiculous and to offer an insult to your understanding. There is not a man beneath the canopy of heaven that does not know that slavery is wrong for him. What am I to argue that it is wrong to make men brutes, to rob them of their liberty, to work them without wages, to keep them ignorant of their relations to their fellow men, to beat them with sticks, to play their flesh with a lash, to load their limbs with irons, to hunt them with dogs, to sell them at auction, to sunder their families, to knock out their teeth, to burn their flesh, to starve them into obedience and submission to their masters. Okay, everybody, uh, I want to thank you for coming over. Uh, we got JT Coins Ring, who just gave me a super chat. He says, thank you, Information Man. Take care, chat. Thank you. Here's the... Uh, thank you for the super chat. Thank you for the super chat. Definitely, I appreciate that. Everybody, that ends the presentation. I'm about to put a crescendo on it. A little tired myself, but I didn't want to be on here for hours. I just wanted to get right to the point. Uh, to let everybody know what has taken place. You're going to hear a lot of things in the news about this. I'm pretty sure some more. Uh, but it's pretty simple, pretty cut and dry. Uh, the, the monument was taken down. There was some damage to the finger part of the monument. Let me put this picture up here to remind people again. It was ripped off the base. Completely ripped off its base. And it's in Rochester, New York, in a park that is connected to the Underground Railroad when... Uh, because he was involved in helping black people escape from the South to come up North as well. So uh, I got a lot of respect and love for the dear great brother, Frederick Douglass. May he rest in complete, holy, powerful peace. Um, may his spirit continue to rise and they can take down the difference between them and us is that they can take, they can harm our monuments, but they can't take it out of our heart. So even if his monument is uh, damaged, even if the monument is taken down, ladies and gentlemen, they can't take Frederick Douglass out of our heart. We keep his spirit living. We'll keep his history living no matter what they try to do. That's the difference. We are a spiritual people. So we know spiritually that we can overcome any physical object damage. But I understand why, as I said before, why this happened. I suspect that it's going to continue happening the whole eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And um, they're taking a lot of losses. And um, their monuments, those Confederate monuments, given their history, they need to come down because they are a symbol of white supremacy. They are a symbol of racism. They are a symbol of slavery. They are a symbol of a, traded, a traitor group who tried to split this country. And all of this, don't let anybody fool you. All of this was over us black people because the south was having an economic power over the north because of the guess what the free slave labor 
But this is another thing I want to remind everybody that can be kind of uh, that people forget to look at in history. Where do you think the South got all their slaves? A lot of these slaves were purchased in the North on slave uh, auction blocks where they would buy them and then they would bring them right on down to the South. So the North, they don't have clean hands in any of this shit. They're just as guilty as well. And Abraham Lincoln, when I was in college, I, I read a quote from him where he says, anything I have to do to keep the union together, if it means freeing slaves or not freeing slaves, I'll do what I got to do. So all he did was put economic sanctions on the South by freeing some, by letting some slaves think that they were free by this quote unquote emancipation. It was really the freaking 14th and 15th and 13th and all these other amendments that really have more of a bigger teeth in our, our in our uh, quote unquote freedom, right? But all that they did was they just transferred property over to the North. So we were seen as property, sh sh shackle prop property. So when they put these sanctions on the South, it was simply like a receipt transferring us as a property over to the north under their jurisdiction we were wards of the goddamn country that's what happened a lot of folks running around thinking oh abraham lincoln freed the you know a lot of the black republicans like to brag about lincoln freed the slaves they don't even know the goddamn history correct <laughs> that emancipation proclamation is not what you think it was they just transferred us over as property of the government from 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 the south and then after they quote unquote made us free they begin to work on the what sharecropping manipulating us and share getting us involved in sharecropping manipulating us economically then they begin to work on building prisons in this country and arresting black men and black men in particular for all sorts of ridiculous things putting us in uh, prisons. And then when we were in their prisons, they did convict leasing on us, convict leasing. And remember that when black people were put into this emancipation or prior to that, when we were still in slavery, you had a lot of slave uh, uprises, uh, revolts. That's why uh, Don, uh, we got uh, Kanye Dumb West thinking that he gonna run for president based on popularity says that black people made a choice to be slaves that's a bumbling dumb statement on his part because there were many slave revolts all across this country which is the reason why policing comes out of slave patrols because it was slave patrols that they created to stop slaves from not only escaping but to stop them from creating slave revolts if you do your deep history, there were slave revolts all over the colonies in the southern states at that time. And that's how policing got its origins. It was not only harassing us on <laughs> when we escaped, but it was also to make sure when, that we not only escaped, but we didn't create a slave revolt. Okay, now let me add this, add this to you. They like to put their monuments up of their heroes who did all kind of crazy things okay why is it no statue of net turner I, you know why there's no statue because net turner he led a he was a preacher he was made a preacher he turned that bible around and said i'm not going to enslave my people with the bible i'm going to turn that bible around and put it against those that are oppressing us and he created a slave revolt and he did and he went from different slave plantations and yes he did kill uh he did kill people he killed white people. He killed people that were enslaving us. And there was a mass manhunt for Nat Turner. And then when they finally caught him, they hung him. They crunched his bones up. They took pieces of his bones and put it into the grounds. They took his skull, which his family, I think, just received his skull maybe a couple of years ago. They actually kept his skull like a lucky charm crushed up and grinded up his body and put it all over the ground and into the uh into the ground and roads oh yeah they 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 because nat turner did the unthinkable and that was to fight back against the oppression everybody thank you for listening to the information man speaks podcast do me a favor because this is a very important 
<laughs> information man show. You know, I, I'm so <laughs> I'm so busy doing videos and stuff on the other channel. I'm still got podcasts. No, it's the information man show. <laughs> the podcast is the other channel. But do me the biggest favor. I need everybody to share this video because of how important it is in all of your social media. Come on now, share it, share it, share it in all your social media. And uh, I'll be back with more program on this channel going into next weekend. I'll probably drop a pre-produced video um, about vitamin D as it relates to COVID-19. I'll probably drop that video sometime uh, during this week as well. So everybody have a good night. Have Enjoy your Sunday. I'll see you around the YouTube streets, everybody. Love you. Peace.